Jody Moncom was one of the early borrowers. In December of 1979, she first learned of this new organization that would give loans even to a poor woman such as her. Today, she looks back on a different life, where every day was a struggle just to keep a roof over their heads. She was married in 1962 at the age of 10 and had her first child when she was 15. Her husband worked as a field laborer, making less than 20 cents a day. So having enough to eat was a constant struggle. It is with difficulty that she speaks of those times. In January of 1980, Jody Mon took out her first loan with a fair amount of trepidation. It was for a total of 600 taka, or about $10. With it, she bought a rice husker and began to husk and sell rice to the local vendors. Over the next year, she worked hard to make the weekly loan payments. Jody Mon made her final payment on January 1st, 1981. For the first time in her life, she and her family were eating three meals a day. Over the last 25 years, Jody Mon has successfully taken out larger loans and paid them back through a number of diverse businesses. Though not all her ventures have been successful, she has built up enough of a safety net so that a setback is not devastating to the family. Now, her grandchildren enjoy a life that would have been inconceivable two decades ago. Jody Mon will tell you that it all started with a $10 loan. This is the VOA special... Special English Economics Report. When it comes to savings, no amount is too small. Microsaving is a growing part of the international movement of microfinance. The aim is to bring financial services to poor people. Modern mic microfinance started with Nobel Prize winning economist Mohammed Yunus in Bangladesh. In the 1970s, he started small loan programs that would become the Grameen Bank. Currently, microcredit providers are in over 100 countries. Now, microfinance institutions are starting to offer other services.
including savings plans. Recently, the nonprofit group Small Enterprise Education and Promotion held a conference in Washington. SEEP works with over 120 groups around the world in efforts to cut poverty. It does this by supporting small businesses. The goal is to help microfinance industry experts share ideas. One idea is called Financial Access at Birth, or FAB. It is designed to start each person with a financial citizenship at birth through a savings account connected to a bank deposit. Rosita Najmi is FAB's program director. FAB starts with financial inclusion, but it creates other opportunities of inclusion across other sectors of health or education, and I think that's what the international development community needs. Mobile or wireless technology will be important to many microfinance services. Inclusion, but it creates other opportunities of inclusion across other sectors of health or education, and I think that's what the international development community needs. Mobile or wireless technology will be imp important to many microfinance services. One meeting at the SEEP conference examined a mobile phone application for saving money. Debbie Dean of the Gr the Grameen Foundation says these efforts can also be extended to other financial services. So I think it's the combination, it's probably going to be some combination of savings programs and, and money transfer programs and payment systems that all kind of converge together to be able to provide the customer with the most flexibility and the most convenience uh, to meet their needs. But offering savings, payments, and other services requires more training and controls. Rashid Bajwa leads Pakistan's largest microfinance organization. He says more training is needed. When microfinance institutions start offering savings products, they have to be trained to do that. This is a specialization which needs specialized people to do the job. You have to have a risk management system in place, you have to have an internal audit system in place, you have to have a huge set of new things which you generally don't need when you are just doing microcredit. Small. Small savings deposits add up, and interest over time makes them grow. This can have a surprising effect for savers and societies. Rashid Bajwa puts it this way. He says, the amount of money that poor people have is unimaginable. 